Hello, my name is Subhash Banerjee, and I'm an associate professor in the Division of Gastroenterology at the Stanford University School of Medicine. And I'm Robert Huang, a clinical instructor in the division. In this video, we will discuss a manuscript entitled Practice Patterns for Cholecystectomy Following ERCP for Patients with Cholelithiasis. As a background, gallstone disease is extremely common, affecting approximately 15% of the adult population of the United States. Once a patient experiences an episode of cholelithiasis and undergoes ERCP for stone extraction, a subsequent cholecystectomy reduces the risk to patients of developing a recurrent biliary event. Now, if cholecystectomy is delayed, patients may potentially suffer from recurrent biliary events while awaiting their cholecystectomy. We were interested in finding out what proportion of patients underwent cholecystectomy within the same hospitalization as the ERCP or within a reasonable period following discharge. We were also interested in determining what factors led to delays in cholecystectomy, if any, and also the medical and financial consequences of delaying cholecystectomy. To address these questions, we conducted a population-level study to assess the practice patterns for cholecystectomy in patients who have undergone ERCP for cholelithiasis. We utilized state administrative data sets from California, Florida, and New York to capture all patients who had in situ gallbladders who were admitted with symptomatic cholelithiasis requiring ERCP. We then determined if these patients had an early cholecystectomy, defined as during the index admission, delayed cholecystectomy, defined as within 60 days of discharge, or if they did not undergo cholecystectomy. We then determined the consequences of each strategy in terms of patient morbidity and mortality, and also in terms of readmission and cost. Finally, we determined the risk factors for not receiving cholecystectomy. We found that approximately 40% of patients underwent cholecystectomy during index admission, and an additional 10% of patients underwent cholecystectomy during the next 60 days. To our surprise, we found that as many as 50% of American patients did not undergo cholecystectomy by 60 days of discharge. As can be seen in this survival curve, <clears throat> early cholecystectomy strategy was strongly protective against the recurrent biliary event within the first, first 60 days of discharge with the magnitude of protective effect approaching 90% compared to patients discharged without a cholecystectomy. Thus, patients who wait until after discharge for a cholecystectomy have a non-trivial risk of suffering from an interval event. After 60 days, both the early and the delayed strategies offered significant protective effect compared to not having cholecystectomy, with a protective effect again approaching 90%. When analyzing predictors for receiving cholecystectomy, we note that high volume centers perform more early cholecystectomy than low volume centers. If patients are discharged from the hospital without cholecystectomy, belonging to a racial minority group or having marginal insurance are significant predictors of not receiving a delayed cholecystectomy. <clears throat> when analyzing cost, a delayed outpatient cholecystectomy appears to be the most cost effective strategy Notably, not undergoing cholecystectomy is not a cost-effective strategy, as the cost of recurrent admissions is equivalent to or greater than the cost of surgery. So to summarize, in the study of over 4,500 patients residing in three large and diverse American states, we surprisingly found that nearly half of Americans admitted with cholecystectomy requiring ARCP did not undergo a cholecystectomy during their initial admission or within 60 days of discharge, leading to unnecessary morbidity and mortality for these patients, and also increased costs to the healthcare system. Patients belonging to minority groups and those with marginal insurance are particularly at risk for not receiving a timely cholecystectomy, highlighting the continuing disparities in the American healthcare system. We hope that this study will inform both clinicians and policymakers about this continuing gap in healthcare delivery and that it will help to improve rates of timely cholecystectomy.